Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. I am so delighted this morning that God has allowed us to join together once again on another presentation of Rays of Hope. I am grateful in my heart for the hope that God has given to me and given to the family of God universal. And I trust that you are experiencing the hope of God because without him, there is no hope. God is a God of hope. God is a God that is always consistent in everything that he does. And our God is for us. Our God is with us. And our God lives in us because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, I am delighted in my heart once again that God has shown us his favor, shown us his grace and his mercy, his love and his kindness. And I give him all the praise and I give him all the glory. And I trusting that God will grant you the desires of your heart. You know, he said in his word, if we delight ourselves in him, he would give us the desires of our hearts. So this morning, I'm looking forward to having a great time of sharing on another presentation of Rays of Hope. And I want you right now, let us prepare ourselves to go before God in prayer, believing that God will do exactly as he promised. He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. Children of God, if there ever was a time in time and in our lives that we need God, that time is now because the world is getting worse. But our God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, he changes not. Our Father and our God this morning, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our hearts rejoice in the God of our salvation, thanking you for your many Many blessings unto us. Your blessings, O oh God, cease not to flow in our lives. And for this, we are grateful. We are grateful how you watched over us, how you have blessed us, and how you have caused your face to shine upon us each and every day of our lives. Father, we pray that you would bless, O oh God, the family of God universal. And Father, we're asking in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, remember, O oh God, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, O oh God, that it span the globe. Bless, O oh God, our presiding apostle, Bishop James I. Clark and his family. Remember, O oh God, the apostles and the bishops and the presbyters, O oh God, throughout the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, and all of our department heads. And Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to remember, O oh God, region two of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless, O oh God, as only you can. Bless, dear God, and keep us in the center of your divine will. It is our desire to do your will and to fulfill, O oh God, your assignment that you have assigned to our lives. And Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus the Christ, remember, O oh God, the Apostle Robert L. Sanders Christian Academy in Liberia, West Africa. Continue to bless, O oh God, the student body Continue to bless the staff, O oh God, and cause your face to shine upon 
that school, dear God, and each one of the students. Bless them, O oh God, in their spirits, soul, and body, that the school will be an instrument of your blessings, dear God, that the children would learn and grow and mature and develop, and they become sons and daughters, O oh God, that has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning, O oh God, in a special way, and we will praise your name forever, for we ask all of these blessings in that name that is above every name, the name Lord Jesus the Christ. And let the people of God say amen and amen. Again, I want to thank God for each and every one of you that have taken the time out of your busy schedule to be with us on another presentation of Rays of Hope. And I thank God consistently for the hope that is within us, that he has deposited there by giving us his word. Now, this morning, I want to begin a new series of messages that is entitled, Fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Fruit bearing, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. That is a new series of messages that I want to share with you for the next few times we are together. And I want you to look with me in our foundational scripture for the series of messages in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at verse number 15 through verse number 20. This will undergird, if you will, our series of messages, Fruit Bearing is Proof and Evidence that You Are Living in Christ. Look what it says in Matthew 7, verse 15 through verse 20. Be aware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Are you with me? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Verse 20 again of Matthew 7. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. 
So our series of messages that we want to begin on this morning, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Now, the scripture is very clear. The scripture is very clear about those who are living the kind of life that God has ordained. And I want us to examine from Scripture that fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. And note number one, It's fruit of the Spirit. If you are living in Christ, you are bearing fruit. And the evidence is fruit bearing. And note number one is fruit of the Spirit which is love. Fruit of the Spirit, which is love. And I want you to notice in the Word of God, in Galatians chapter 5. Turn with me in Galatians chapter 5, and you can see that if you are in Christ, living in Christ, you are a fruit bearer. And the fruit that is being birthed, if you will, or being bored, or the life that is bearing the fruit of the Spirit, is evident that you are in Christ. It's the fruit of the Spirit, which is really love. And so I want you to look with me in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. Go there with me, if you would, uh, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. These days, it is important for the child of God to be a bearer of good fruit because it's the evidence. It's the evidence. It's the proof that you are living in Christ. Look what it says in Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22 and verse 23. Look what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. You know why? It's because when one is living in Christ, one is a bearer of fruit. One is not static. The child of God's life is fruitful. It bears fruit. And the fruit is the fruit of the Spirit. That's evidence. That's proof that one is living in Christ. 
every now and then we are or should expect, inspect our lives. In other words, judge yourselves whether you are burying the fruit that should come forth from the life of the believer who lives in Christ. Because remember, the word of God says, any man that be in Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So if you are living in Christ, then you are a fruit bearer. You are a bearer of the fruit of the Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers the believer. It is the Holy Spirit that gives guidance and direction to the believer. It is the Holy Spirit that causes us to follow Jesus. The Holy Spirit, that's his ministry or his assignment in the life of the believer because there is no power in the believer's life if the Holy Spirit is absent. And so the child of God who should be a bearer of fruit are able to bear fruit of the Spirit because they live in Christ. And the proof and the evidence that one lives in Christ is that they are a fruit bearer. And so note number one, that we are a fruit bearer in Christ is that the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. The fruit of the Spirit is born and expressed through the love of God. And the expression of that love in the life of every believer, the expression of that love comes in the form of love itself and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and godliness and faith and meekness and temperance. In other words, if one is living in Christ, one is a fruit bearer. And the child of God bears the fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit of God that lives in the believer is not static. The Spirit that lives in the believer bears fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit is manifested in the life of the believer that lives in Christ. The Spirit, through the believer's life, bears the fruit of the Spirit, which expresses itself in love. In our attitudes, our disposition 
in life is characterized by the love of God and the experiencing of joy. And joy is the believer's strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Praise the name of the Lord. And God gives that believer peace which passes all understanding. Praise the name of our God. And long-suffering. You're going to hang in there and do what God has given you to do regardless of what your assignment is. That's the fruit that is born by the believer. Gentleness. You are gentle just like your Savior when you are living in Christ goodness and you have faith and trust in God himself and your disposition is meekness you're a meek like your savior your temperance your balance self-control is as important and all of this gives the believer hope to continue standing on a firm foundation, which is the word of God. And children of God, the proof and the evidence that you are living in Christ is borne out through the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. And it reflects the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's life should be reflected through the life of every believer because the believer is a fruit bearer, not negative fruit, but positive fruit. We are true disciples, true believers, not false prophets or false believers, but we are authentic because you are fruit bearer. You shall know the tree by the fruit it bears. A false believer or a false prophet or a false teacher cannot bear the fruit of the Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit is born by those who possess the Holy Spirit himself, baptized in the Spirit of God. And when you are baptized in the Spirit of God, the Spirit himself bears fruit through the believer's life. And children of God, be bearers of the fruit that comes as a result of the infilling of the Holy Spirit and is done through love. We become a child of God who God himself is love. And so if God is love, then his children should be children of love to bear the fruit of the Spirit. This is absolutely 
positively necessary in the life of every believer. So fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Did you hear what I say? Fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Note number two, fruit of righteousness, which is uprightness. When you are a fruit bearer, the proof and evidence that you are living in Christ is the fruit of righteousness. The fruit of righteousness, which speaks of uprightness. Uprightness. Now, this is important because the fruit of righteousness, number one, righteousness is a gift that is given to every believer. And that righteousness is given to us by our Savior. We have no righteousness of our own. But being a believer who lives in Christ, we are to bear the fruit of righteousness, which is an upright life. When the Lord came into our lives, there was a transformation that took place. That transformation was done by the power of God himself. The power of the gospel is able to transform sinners into saints, which causes the child of God who lives in Christ to be a fruit bearer of righteousness, which causes one to live upright, upright before the Lord. It is impossible to live upright without the fruit of righteousness that has been given to the child of God. We seek not our own righteousness, but the righteousness of God. And we live a life of righteousness. And that fruit is born or manifested as we live upright before God. Our lives should be different than the world. The scripture says, be in the world, but not of the world. And when we are not of the world, then we can bear the fruit of righteousness, which causes us to live with uprightness. Uprightness is what is so important for us as believers to display before the world. It's like letting our light shine in dark places. Jesus said to his disciples, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, the works of righteousness, the fruit of righteousness, a life of uprightness, before God. This is absolutely important before 
so the child of God can live a productive life, if you will. I want you to open your Bibles with me and look with me in the book of Philippians. Turn to the book of Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. I want you to look at verse number 9 through verse number 11. Fruit bearing, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. And Philippians chapter 1, verse number 9 says, And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Verse 10, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Did you get that? Verse 11, powerful verse. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. In other words, when you are filled with the fruits of righteousness, well, you glorifies God being filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. The believer's life should be fluid in praise, in worship, in adoration, in blessing, in demonstrating the life of God. Any man be in Christ is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are becomes new. So a fruit bearer, a fruit bearer is proof and evidence that you are in and living in Christ Jesus. This is key. That's note number two. Fruit of righteousness. That's what should be born in the life of every believer. The fruit of righteousness which speaks of uprightness, how you carry yourself, how you live, how you walk, how you talk, how you allow your life to be lived in the world. It should be the fruit of righteousness the fruit of righteousness, which is uprightness. Look at verse 11 again in Philippians chapter 1. Now, being filled, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, 
unto the glory and the praise of God. We are to be in examples to the world how to live, how to live the life that is pleasing to God. When you are living a life that is pleasing to God, the world sees you as a fruit bearer. You shall know them by their fruit. A corrupt tree cannot bear good fruit. A corrupt tree bear fruit of unrighteousness. And unrighteousness does not bring praise and glory to God. A corrupt tree bears corrupt fruit. Are you listening? If you don't believe it, go back with me to Galatians chapter 5, and you will see with me a, the, the fruit of a corrupt tree. Because the fruit of a corrupt tree bears fruit of the flesh. And the fruit of the flesh does not bring praise and glory to God. Are you listening, children of God? The child of God is to be a bearer of fruit, but good fruit. Fruit of righteousness. Fruit of the Spirit. A corrupt tree bears fruit of the flesh. Look with me in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 19. Galatians 5, verse number 19 says, Now the works or the fruit of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So it is necessary to be a bearer of good fruit. The child of God must bear the fruit that comes from God. Like, for example, Romans 12 and 1 said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your mind. This is where fruit bearing comes, is when the mind is re been renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We no longer bear fruit of the flesh, 
but we bear fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit, which testifies that the child of God is living in Christ, is the proof, is the evidence that you're in Christ because you bear fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of righteousness, which is a life that is lived upright before God. Children of God, if there ever was a time that God needs his children, his church, his bride to bear fruit, it is now. There are so many untruths, lies being told these days that can confuse the world and confuse even the child of God if the child of God is not careful. Jesus makes the statement he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me, except by me. Jesus is the way to live a life of fruit-bearing, good fruit-bearing. Fruit that comes from the Holy Spirit. Fruit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering. The fruit of righteousness. One cannot live the life of Christ apart from the operation of the Holy Spirit of God in their lives. This is why Jesus said to his disciples that it was necessary to go to Jerusalem and tarry there and wait there until they were endowed from power from on high. And, and he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost of the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Ye shall be my witnesses, starting in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. So what Jesus needs today for us, his children, his body, his bride, to be fruit bearers of good fruit. Fruit bearers is fruit, is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. In other words, when we are living in Christ, we are bearing good fruit. And the world looks at us. And when the world sees us, they see the Christ that is in us. It is not us that is so important for the world to see. The world needs to see the Christ in us. We are the bearers of good fruit, the fruit that reflects the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. This is what makes us a new creation is the abiding of the Spirit of God in our lives. And we are no longer our own. We have been bought with a price. And that price is the price of the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus shed his blood that we may be fruit bearers because we are connected to the vine and the vine is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And as long as we are connected to the vine, we bear fruit because the branch is connected to the vine and what is in the vine is in the branches. And the fruit that comes from our God, the Holy Spirit himself, is manifested in the branches. And we are to be fruit bearers. And fruit bearing is proof and evidence that we are in Christ Jesus. We live in him. We walk in him. We abide in him. And he abide in us. We are in Christ. And Christ is in us. We are in God. And God is in us. As he is, so are we in this world. And I say to you, children of God, this morning, on another presentation of Rays of Hope, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are in Christ. And I want to be in Christ all the days of my life because one day I will see his face and I want to see his face in peace. And I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And he said, if we are faithful over a few things, he'll make us ruler over many. We are going to reign with Christ in his kingdom. Praise the name of our God. I thank God this morning for you being with me and I pray God's blessing will rest upon you and your family. Our Father and our God, in the name of your Son, thank you for this time together. And Father, I ask that you would anoint us and bless us that we will continue to be fruit bearers of your grace, of your mercy, of your love, and of your kindness. We are fruit bearers of the Holy Spirit. We are fruit bearers of your righteousness, uprightness in life, uprightness in living, uprightness in our testimony, uprightness in our disposition. We are your sons and daughters, and we thank you this morning for blessing us once again on another presentation of Rays of Hope. Thank you again for being with me this morning, and join me next Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. on another presentation of Rays of Hope. I am Apostle Robert L. Sanders Sr., your servant, willing to serve the people of God with the love of God in my heart. Enjoy the rest of your day and join me next Sunday, same time, on another presentation of Rays of Hope. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your day.